Oh my goodness, that's a big fish, guys. Right in the snoot. <laughs> I am definitely a fan. You know, there's a lot of factors that go into when and where and why you would choose to fish finesse techniques. The weather, the temperature, the water clarity, how much pressure is on that lake. You either love finesse fishing or you'll do it if you have to. For me, I fall in that latter category because I love power fishing. I love my casting rods. I love the control, the accuracy, and the power that I can get out of a casting rod. But if I do have to go finesse fishing, I'm like everybody else, I'm forced to use one of my spinning rods. What would you say if I told you there's a way that you can now drop that spinning rod and pick up a casting rod and still fish all of your favorite finesse techniques? Welcome to BFS. BFS, Bait Finesse Systems. Uniquely designed casting reels that finally allow you to fish your favorite finesse techniques on your casting equipment. All the power, control, and accuracy that you have with your casting equipment, but on those tiny finesse techniques. And this right here, this is the brand new Casking Kestrel BFS reel. Casking knocked it out of the park with this one and put some amazing technology into this tiny, palm sized little reel. The Casking Kestrel is currently the lightest bait casting reel ever produced, coming in at a whopping 4.4 ounces. They did that with an all magnesium frame and carbon fiber side blades, a unique 80 millimeter carbon fiber handle, and the world's lightest production spool coming in at less than 4.6 grams. But there's a lot more to BFS reels than just making them ultra light. You're gonna need excellent braking systems. You're gonna need to be able to cast those ultra light little lures and techniques out there. And when you're talking about any kind of finesse fishing, even with your spinning equipment, that drag is super important. And it's important to be able to play those fish because you're using light line, like eight pound, six pound, four pound test line. You gotta have a good drag system to be able to fight those fish. Just because you're using small lures doesn't mean you're catching small fish. And casting put an audible drag on there. It's really cool. Just like your spinning rods, you can now hear it when you're actually playing and fighting those fish. One of the most unique designs of any BFS reel is in that spool right there. Not only is it ultra light, it's very shallow because you're only putting on very light line, but that's gonna allow that to give you a better accuracy and better distance out of your casting when you're using ultra light lures. Casking put a ton of ingenuity into the braking system alone. And that's very important because you gotta be able to slow down that spool really quickly with those ultra light literal lures. Casking really knocked it out of the park on this one. And you're really able to fine tune that more than you've ever done on any braking system before. But no matter how technical they got in designing the Kestrel, none of that matters if it can't cast those ultralight lures. So only one thing to do here, let's put it to the test the way I do best. And let's see if we can't fish this new BFS Casking Kestrel on some of my favorite finesse techniques. Out on the water, I got it all rigged up, ready to go. I actually put on Casking's brand new braid. It's an 8X finesse braid. It's eight pound braid. It's incredibly foot thin, incredibly smooth. And I got attached to that 12 foot, six pound Casking Covert fluorocarbon leader. Eight pound braid, six pound fluorocarbon leader. That's incredibly small, especially for a casting rod. I've also put that, the new Kestrel on, a Casking Perigee 2. This is a seven foot medium fast action rod. I believe that seven foot, that little extra length is gonna help me get a little bit more casting distance because it can load up. There's a little more rod to load up. And that fast action of a tip is really gonna help out with those smaller lures as well. I'm gonna try out some of my favorite techniques when it comes to finesse fishing. I'm gonna throw a little bit of Ned rigs. We got some little tiny flukes, some little tiny top waters. It should be a good day. Let's put this to the test and see how good we can do with the new Kestrel BFS reel. All right, for lure number one, it's hard to go finesse without wanting to throw a Ned rig. And I'm gonna try that out. Now this is actually the small Ned rig. This is a 1 10th ounce, I believe is the size of that head there. And then add the little extra weight that's on here. You're talking about 1 16th of an ounce in total weight here. Ultra light, I've never thrown anything like this on a casting equipment before. I've never thrown a Ned rig on anything but 
spinning rod before so it's going to be quite a test here we're going to put the brakes on maximum see how far we can cast it and see how well it controls it before we end up fine tuning it down adjusting the brakes to get it to where it wants but there it is and there is a tension knob on here i've tightened that down just enough so it only allows the bait as small as it is to just slowly drop well, here we go cast number one one sixteenth ounce No bird's nest, that's a bonus. That would have given me a fit trying to do that on regular casting equipment. I've never done that before. I'm gonna back that break off just a little bit. That 10 now, let's see where that goes. That definitely got me at least 10 more feet. So with little effort, I'm already able to cast this small little Ned rig here. Uh, about 40 feet and not really having to work too hard with that and zero bird's nest whatsoever now i'm going to see how accurately i can do that because it is casting equipment that's the whole point to me is control and accuracy so far for 116 balance weight i'm having real good luck being able to cast this where i want my accuracy is good my control is great and my distance is actually fairly fairly impressive already and i haven't even toned it down yet let's give it a little heave honestly that went at least 50 feet out to the side here no bird's nest whatsoever that's pretty cool very impressive So I'm sitting about 60 feet off of this Kissimmee grass edge line. And I'm literally casting with very good accuracy up against the edge of that grass with a 1 16th ounce little Ned rig. It's not a weedless lure. So I'm trying not to get it into the grass and I'm very impressed with a distance that I am as well as how accurate I'm able to do it. So it's time to try something else. And what we're gonna do now is one of my favorite finesse techniques and that's the mini zoom super fluke. Little Super Fluke Junior, I believe they call that. It's just about a three inch bait, a little soft plastic, not a lot of weight to this whatsoever. And I've got a, a one knot offset straight shank hook on that weightless, zero weight at all. So this is all the weight there is, whatever this hook weighs and whatever this little tiny soft plastic. But if we can cast it with this and work it properly with this, that's a huge advantage because I've always had to use spinning equipment for this technique before. That's pretty cool. I got a good distance. I got at least 50 feet on it, maybe 60 feet. And I could probably do a heck of a lot more if I actually tone it in a little bit. This thing is probably one of the lightest lures that I would ever cast. And that's incredible. I got it all the way to those weeds, exactly on the point that I was trying to get it at. Really the whole point uh, out here today is just to test these lures out anyway and see how well I can actually operate with this casting Kestrel with this new BFS reel. That tiny little fluke, I can whip that thing pretty easily. A good 60 feet with accuracy. The most important thing about using a BFS reel or the ability of a BS, BFS reel is to be able to give me that accuracy, that control, and that power that I'm used to having with casting equipment. But still be able to use finesse techniques like this when they're honing in on smaller bait, or when really nothing but a finesse pr approach is gonna work. So here is my typical spinning outfit, but you can already see right, tied onto it already. I have a little popper because this is the outfit that I use this little popper with all the time. I'm gonna switch this popper off of the spinning rod and I'm gonna put it on my new BFS reel here and see how well top water works that I usually always use on spinning gear. This little popper here, only about two, two inches long to maybe two and a half inches long. It's nice and tiny. It's got a lot, a lot of little rattles on it. But the key to working something like this, I probably won't, I don't wanna typically throw it in open water unless I see some schooling fish or something. This dark popper is works really good around that cover. And I've always had to do it with spinning gear because that's the only thing that could actually throw something this light. 
now with this BFS, I should be able to work this around that grass and be accurate with my casts in the little pockets in between the grass where these treble hooks aren't going to get fouled up and caught up into that grass. Let's see. So I know you guys can't see this, but I'm about 60 yards off of this, or 60 feet off of this grass line. My trolling motor has died. It's not working at all. So I'm letting the wind blow me across. I'm moving pretty quick, and I'm accurately hitting the little pockets and the little edges and the little points of this grass with this popper. That's really cool. Well, that's awesome, guys. Honestly, I can't think of a better test for it right there. This little popper... I don't know what it weighs, but it's probably about a quarter of an ounce, somewhere around there. It's pretty light. It's very small. But I'm casting 60 to 70 feet with that breaks down to about seven on this, accurately hitting little pockets in the entire grass line when I have no control over my boat. That is very cool. And this couldn't have been done with spinning equipment, I promise you. That Kestrel, this thing's awesome. Got one more test. I know where there's a brush pile or two. Let's see if we can throw a drop shot on it. All right, for the last bit, we're gonna do a drop shot. Got a little tiny octopus hook and a 1 8 ounce tungsten bell sinker. On the oh my goodness, that's a big fish guys. We got a big one. This is a good fish, guys. There he is. Yes. How's that drop shot? This is that drag. This, this is why you have that drag right there. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, baby. This is this. This is the deal right here, guys. Get him in the boat. <laughs> Look at that. That is just plain awesome right there. That casking kestrel on a tiny little 1 8 ounce bell sinker. And you can see the hook right in his mouth. Beautiful little bass. That is what it's all about. And I am super, super glad I got this reel. And I'm now in the world of BFS because, baby, that is awesome. Right there. That's what it's all about. Catching good fish on a drop shot on a casting clip. Never fished a drop shot on casting equipment before, but now I can, and this is the results. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Thank you, baby. Woo! Right in the snoot. <laughs> I love it. I am definitely a fan of BFS. I really truly didn't know what to think about the new Castro here. BFS was foreign to me. Great finesse system though, but I'm a huge fan now. A lot of these finesse techniques that I always had to use spinning gear for now, I now have complete power and control over with casting gear. And to me, that's awesome. I can now fish them in different ways, different places, just opens up my whole finesse world that much more having this. Very highly impressed, I am a huge fan, and I highly recommend you all take a chance and look at the new Castrell from Casting.